Welcome to the Painted Forest. Nestled in the small community of Valton, Wisconsin, the deceptively plain white clapboard exterior of the Camp 6190 building offers no hint at the treasures contained within. For nearly 20 years, this was the local center for the activities of a fraternal organization, the Modern Woodmen of America. Here, the association held meetings, conducted initiation ceremonies, and gathered together for social activities. Once inside, you will be surrounded by the enveloping murals of Ernest Hoopadin, who created within this small building a painted forest. Hoopadin, an itinerant painter from Germany, created this panoramic interior for the local unit of the modern woodmen of America between 1897 and 1899. His painted scenes depict the rites and rituals of the fraternity while presenting a metaphoric depiction of a life safeguarded by the Brotherhood. Hoopadin's murals offer a glimpse of the past which is not easily found in written or oral history. A number of ritual artifacts donated by the modern woodmen of America make the small museum a site wherein area geography, history, art, and culture are all preserved. The lodge was originally called Wood Hall, but Hoopadin's evocative imagery caused it to become known widely as the Painted Forest. Hoopadin journeyed to the Midwest some two decades after immigrating from Germany in 1878, where he had been imprisoned on what was later proven to be a false accusation of embezzlement. It was during his years of incarceration that Hoopadin taught himself to paint. Seeking a fresh start after his release, Hoopadin traveled to America, supporting himself as a painter. Equally versed in ornamental, house, and easel painting, and by taking whatever odd jobs he could find. Over the next two decades, Hoopadin traveled westward, often on foot, making his way from New York to Wisconsin. The local chapter of the Modern Woodmen of America first engaged Hoopadin to paint the stage curtain for their then newly constructed lodge, offering him room and board in exchange for his work. The curtain mural depicts what was, at the time, a current American event. The dramatic Battle of Manila Bay, and the USS Olympia defeating the Spanish flotilla. The founders of the lodge were pleased with Hoopadin's engaging rendition of the battle and employed him to paint the rest of the hall's interior with a series of scenes depicting the ways of their fraternal order. As requested, Hoopadin's renderings encapsulate various narratives that are simultaneously literal and symbolic. To underscore the power that was on the side of the Brotherhood, Hoopadin covered the ceiling with a brilliant sunset and a spectacular electrical storm. However, this section of the original mural was lost during the years of deterioration that preceded the structure's conservation. Not unlike the Freemason, who likened their work to that of an almighty architect, the modern woodmen took their name from the foresters who originally cleared the land, using them and their work to symbolize teamwork and progress. Inside the meeting hall, members of the organization would have held conversations about their collective mission, with Hoopadin's murals used to instruct and remind. The murals illustrate the perils that a man may encounter as he loses his way alone in the wilderness. Conversely, wisdom personified by the elder, order, and safety prevail for those banded together by brotherhood. The murals follow a loose order. Above the closet, just to the right of the stage, is a foreboding scene that begins with an injured man riding a goat. The scene alludes to a secret initiation ritual that, in life, would have included the wooden goat on view elsewhere in this room. Injured, alone, and terrified, the initiate hurdles uncontrollably towards the depths of the forest where death is symbolized by a tree losing its leaves, an owl, and some human skeletal remains. The subsequent murals depict a visual tale of the initiate's passage as he attains membership in the fraternity. Following the death scene, the forest again becomes verdant and lush. Nevertheless, the woods seen here are still an untamed wilderness, full of danger. Here, the lonely initiate is depicted as a victim in the wilds, hoodwinked by thieves who drag him toward their sinister camp. Hope comes as the scene moves to the right and the fraternal brothers lead him out of the depths of darkness into the firelight and a manicured clearing where he will find safety among the order. In the next scene, along the north wall, the figure of an elder points to a castle on a hill. 
the castle's flag identifies it as Valton Camp number 6190 and heralds peace, light, and safety for the modern woodmen of America. On the adjacent east wall, a family insured by the association is shown in a settlement well kept by the woodsmen. Trees have been felled and split, mother and baby are cared for, and the older boy learns by example from the honorable men. The family pictured was actually modeled on people Hoopadin knew, Mr. and Mrs. Charles Gabot, whose baby son, depicted here, was named Royal Forest, the entry password to the meeting hall. Hoopadin's final scene shows Valton as envisioned in 1999, a hundred years into the future. His vision of the town at the turn of the new millennium includes a main street lined with tall buildings. It depicts local landmarks and businesses such as the Valton Bank, where a widow collects her husband's insurance benefit from the modern woodman. The scene includes two general stores, two blacksmiths, a hardware store, tavern, creamery, grist mill, millinery, and barrel stave factory. Hoopadin's insertion of the tavern is a tongue-in-cheek comment alluding to his own love of the drink and his ongoing dismay at Valton's Puritan ban on alcohol. Other forms of Hoopadin's artwork have been discovered in this region of Wisconsin. These include painted murals on walls and barns, scenes painted on furniture and household goods, and even paintings on canvas, many of which depict the rolling hills and valleys of Wisconsin's driftless area, where Ice Age glaciers crumpled the land. Wisconsin was home to the itinerant painter for the last decade of his life, a life that ended abruptly in 1911 when a farmer discovered Hoopadin's frozen body huddled under a painter's drop cloths in his barn. Two major conservation efforts are responsible for preserving the painted forest. The first was in the 1980s when the Kohler Foundation acquired the site and restored the damaged murals and structure. A second project was undertaken in 2001 in which the facility was further updated and an art studio and study center were built just down the road to make this remote site more accommodating for students. The Kohler Foundation subsequently gave the painted forest to Edgewood College of Madison, an institution that has pledged to ongoing preservation and related educational programs as steward of this site.